Hi, welcome back for today's movie recap. Today, we will recap the movie, The Quake. After the huge wave in Guyranger, Christian is now living on his own after Eden left him and brought their children with her. But after learning about a quake that is soon to hit Oslo, Christian set out to protect his family from another disaster. In 2016, a year after the tsunami hit the city of Guyranger, Christian became quite known due to his outstanding act of kindness during the disaster. Christian was hailed as a hero, but instead of feeling proud for having saved a lot of people, he still felt responsible for the loss of 248 lives. Now, it's been three years since the tsunami, and Christian is now living alone in the mostly rebuilt Guyranger. Eden has broken up with him, and their children, Sondra and Julia, were staying with their mother in Oslo. Julia often visits Christian from time to time, as she still loves being with her father, despite the fact that her father has become unstable and is no longer fit to take care of her and Sondra. One night, when Julia visited Christian, she saw different articles about the Guyranger tsunami plastered on the wall in the secret room Christian made as a dedication to what happened in Guyranger, and also as a daily reminder that Christian also felt responsible for the deaths of 248 people. This secret room was actually what caused a strain in his relationship with Eden, who left when she couldn't stand the sight of Christian wallowing in self-pity anymore. Julia realized that her father still hadn't moved on from what happened and seemed to have gotten worse by himself. The next day, Christian woke up to see Julia preparing breakfast for the two of them. Christian smiled, but instead of sitting down for breakfast, he told Julia that it would be best if she went back home to her mother. Albeit disappointed, Julia listened to her father without any complaints. They went to the ferry, and before she entered the ferry, Julia hugged her father goodbye. Christian stepped into his car without any words, but when he saw that Julia had left her sweater in the car, he grabbed it and stepped out to give it to Julia. But the fairy had left, and Christian was left all alone again, so he just sadly went back to his car without knowing that Julia was watching him from the ferry. Inside a tunnel, a man was seen working alone. The man felt a tremble in the ground but ignored it. Christian was cleaning up while listening to the news play on TV when he heard about an accident in a tunnel and a familiar name being mentioned by the reporters. The name mentioned was Conrad, who died in the tunnel, and when Christian checked his phone, we saw that Conrad had sent a message to Christian. Conrad is actually a fellow geologist that Christian used to work with. Christian grabbed the envelope he saw on the table. He opened it and read the documents inside. The news reported that the tunnel collapsed because of blasting, which happens during construction, but Christian felt that something else happened that caused the tunnel to collapse. Christian had that same feeling he had back then, before the Guyranger was hit by the wave, and decided to travel to Oslo to investigate what really happened in the tunnel. Christian went to where Conrad was working and met with Conrad's supervisor, Johannes. Johannes reassured Christian that what happened in the tunnel was just construction work and blasting and showed Christian the yellow dots on the computer screen, which indicate that the quake that happened in the tunnel was man-made, while confirmed earthquakes are shown as red dots. Christian still didn't believe that what happened was a man-made disaster, so he went to Conrad's address to further investigate what really happened. But this time without asking for Johannes' help. He arrived at Conrad's address and met Conrad's daughter, Marit. Marit allowed Christian to go to Conrad's workroom while she talked with the funeral agency. Christian went to Conrad's workroom and looked around the room. He discovered Conrad's research, a bunch of documents, core samples, and a map with serious seismic activity recorded. Christian realized that everything Johannes said about the accident was false, so he called the latter to tell him this, but Johannes didn't listen to Christian's claims. Christian requested that Johannes call the contractor, and Johannes reluctantly agreed despite his belief that the accident was just a mere blast during construction. Later that night, Christian went to where Eden and their children were living. On his way up to their apartment, he bumped into Sondra and his girlfriend, Mia. Christian let Sondra leave with his girlfriend while he walked inside the apartment to see Eden. Seeing him, Eden hugged him, and the two of them talked for a while. Christian wanted to tell Eden what he was in Oslo for so that Eden would be more prepared when something really happened, but the electricity went out. He followed Eden down to where the electrical panel is, and Eden started fixing it. Suddenly, they heard a rattle somewhere and saw multiple rats running past them. Eden panicked and tried to stomp on the rats, but Christian calmed her down. Eden went to fix the electrical panel again, but there was no need to as the electricity finally went back. She slammed the electrical panel closed in annoyance and went back to their room. Seeing her irritated, Christian decided not to tell her in the meantime. The next day, Eden accompanied Julia to her recital. Julia asked for her father's whereabouts, and Eden reassured her daughter that Christian would come before the recital started. 
Meanwhile, Christian went back to Conrad's address to continue his investigation. When Marit saw him inside her father's workroom, she reminded him that he would need to leave, but Christian told her about the concerning research Conrad was doing before he died. After a while, Marit was convinced that there was really something strange about the accident and agreed to go with Christian to the tunnel. They reached their destination and saw the collapsed part of the tunnel. Christian saw a door, and the two of them entered it. They walked through the tight spaces until they found a ladder. Christian climbed on it while Marit stayed below. She noticed a rat's cage on the ground and was weirded out by it. Christian asked her for some light, and when she pointed the light towards Christian, they felt a shake on the ground. Christian saw the core sample Conrad was attempting to recover before his death and pulled it out. He and Marit left the tunnel, and inside the car, he received a call from Eden. The recital had already started, and seeing that Christian still wasn't there, Eden went out for a bit to call him and ask him where he was. Christian couldn't answer her question due to the core sample snapping, and Christian realized just how unusually fragile the earth in Oslo is. He went back to talking to Eden, but the latter wasn't answering him anymore. There was a seismic rift that caused the opera house Julia was performing in to shake and get destroyed. While everyone else was running out of the opera house, Eden was running back inside to save Julia, who was still inside. A woman was still inside the opera house, telling anyone else who was inside to leave. She saw Eden and tried to get her to leave, saying that no one was there anymore. But debris fell on the stage, and they heard a scream coming from underneath the broken desk. Eden rushed to get Julia, who was underneath it. And they all left the opera house. Christian and Marit saw what was happening from their car and immediately went to the opera house. Christian was looking for Eden and Julia outside when he received a call from Eden, who told him that they were heading home. After the call, Christian saw Johannes going into the opera house, which has now stopped quaking. Christian followed him to confirm if it really was an earthquake, and Johannes answered that they had detected a movement but weren't sure what it was. Christian went back to the car to get the core sample he got from the tunnel and went back to Johannes, who was inspecting the support beams with his team. Christian confronted him and told him that Conrad went to the tunnel to get rock samples, and that what happened wasn't a blast but an earthquake. Johannes ignored Christian's warning yet again and claimed that the seismic rift in the opera house was due to the deteriorating support beams, which indicate construction errors. Seeing that Johannes still didn't believe him, Christian walked away while Johannes watched him, silently in conflict with himself and wondering whether or not he should believe Christian. Christian told Marit to go back home while he went back to Eden's apartment. He talked to Eden, who was still shaken up by what happened, and Christian answered that he was investigating the disasters that happened in Oslo. Eden was disappointed to see that Christian was still hung up on disasters and saving people. She reminded him that his family was still alive because he protected them, and she comforted Christian as he cried in her arms. On the other hand, Johannes is now investigating the recent disasters that have occurred too. When he saw the result of his investigation, he started realizing what Christian had been trying to tell him. Christian woke up to see that Eden had already left for work. Sondra approached him when he was washing up, and they talked for a bit. Julia woke up and when she saw her father, she immediately went to hug him. Sondra then left for school, and just seconds after he left, Marit came to show him an odd video of rats panicking and then dying. Christian realized that the rats died because of the leaking of toxic gases. Marit was confused as she thought Christian was worried about earthquakes, and Christian clarified that toxic gases leak out of the pores of a mountain right before an earthquake. Meanwhile, Johannes saw through the monitor the number of yellow dots appearing. Christian, Marit, and Julia rushed to the hotel where Eden was working. Christian was trying to call Sondra, who wasn't answering because he was in class. Sondra was receiving his call, and despite rejecting the calls, Sondra couldn't help but feel like something bad was going to happen. As soon as they arrived at the hotel, Christian rushed inside to get Eden. Inside the elevator, he called Johannes to tell him what was going to happen, but the call got cut short. An alarm went off in the university thanks to Christian, who called the police station and lied about a bomb inside the university. But everyone ignored the alarm. And Sondra was the only one who knew it was serious as he whispered to Mia that they needed to leave. Meanwhile, Marit got distracted by another car's driver and didn't see Julia sneaking out of the car and going up to the hotel. When she noticed, she immediately followed her inside. Christian reached Eden and pulled her to the elevator, despite Eden's confusion. On their way to the elevator, he pulled the alarm so that everyone would leave the building. Just as the elevator doors were closing, Christian saw Julia coming out of another elevator. He tried to stop the elevator from closing but failed. Julia went to the balcony, and Marit followed her. Inside the elevator, Christian was shaking in fear when the electricity went off. On the other hand, everyone in Johannes' office was leaving while Johannes was still staring at the monitor, 
seeing all the yellow dots turn into red dots. His assistant, Ingrid, called him, and he followed them out. The earth began shaking, going from zero to one hundred real quick. Marit pulled Julia, who was still on the balcony, inside the building. Sondra and Mia ducked down and covered their heads as debris started falling onto their heads. While in the elevator, Christian and Eden plummeted to the ground and abruptly stopped midway, and the two of them lost consciousness. When the earth was done trembling, Christian helped Eden up, and the two of them started looking for a way out. They climbed up the elevator, and Christian comforted Eden, who was panicking. Marit woke up and saw Julia aiding another victim who was stuck under debris. They helped the lady out of the debris and tried to help her when the building beside the hotel started falling down. It hit the hotel, and the floor they were on started bending downward. The lady slid down and fell to her death. Marit, who slid down but managed to grab hold of a bar seat, caught Julia, who was also sliding down. Christian warned Eden to move, but before Eden could do what she was told to, she was hit by a falling piece of metal, and her leg got scraped. Christian helped her as they climbed up until they reached an open door that led to the floor. Christian used a cable to swing towards the open door. When he finally got in, he threw the cable to Eden, who took it and tried to swing towards him. But she struggled due to her injury, and the elevator above threatened to plummet down. Christian reached out to Eden, begging her to reach out to him too, but Eden just kept on telling him that she loved him, reminding him to save Julia. Christian convinced her to reach out to him, and she finally did. She grabbed hold of Christian's hand, but they were a tad bit too late as the cable snapped and Eden fell, followed by the elevator plummeting down, which would surely crush her. Christian was devastated by his lover's death but willed himself to look for Julia. He went to where Marit and Julia were and hugged Julia when he finally reached her. Julia learned what happened to her mother and was devastated. They then started climbing up, and Julia slid down, followed by Christian, who tried to save her. She fell on the glass window and fearfully called out to her father, losing consciousness. Christian regained consciousness and carefully went to save her, while Marit was also carefully going down. Christian grabbed hold of Julia just as the glass broke, and Marit used a cable to help them up. Christian swung Julia towards Marit, who immediately lifted her up as soon as she got her. They climbed up and went for safety, after everything that happened, Marit went back to her almost destroyed home, tearing up as she looked at her picture with her father. Meanwhile, Christian and Julia reunited with Sondra, who also survived the earthquake with his girlfriend. The three of them were riding on a ferry going back to Geiranger, where they planned to stay together as a family of three.